Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile, and I am going to be starting my first, this is my first video, and uh, we will see how it goes. Did a little bit of research, a little bit of reading, uh, trying the best way to do these videos, and uh, watch a lot of them. So I'm hoping I got uh, tips from the best, and uh, we'll see what uh, comes up. Again, Trusty Huckster Mercantile is available on Etsy. I have just uh, started my store. I actually launched in October, and I am actually in the waiting list for three separate vintage stores that I have yet to be able to get into for the last several months. So actually, the Etsy store was kind of a reaction to the fact I couldn't get into a shop. I was building up inventory for the uh, individual stores that I was on the waiting list for, and it was kind of overtaking my place. So we are putting them online. So, so far, uh, so good. I can't say that this is something I'm seeing as a full-time endeavor. I actually am a full-time traveling salesman for a library sales company. Uh, so I have a nine state territory through the upper Midwest. And that is actually how I source most of my items. I'm based outside the Chicago area. That is where everything ships from. And a good chunk of it comes from there. But I cover uh, as far west and north as North and South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri. So there is always a uh, odd mix uh, what I'll be bringing into my store. And the store will always represent what I'm interested in. I'm really not uh, interested in selling just you know things that I know will make money. I do want to make some money. I'm not doing this as a charity, but I want to have fun uh, as I'm handling things and I'm building my own personal collection. So that's always kind of fun. And just uh, I look at it as giving something a brand new home. So and in some cases, saving it from what would probably be death in the Goodwill bins. Uh, I'm hoping I can give it some life a uh, little bit. And if I can make a little bit of money at the same time, all the better. Uh, money will just at this point continue to support trucks, trusty Huckster Mercantile. Even I can't say it. A lot of people don't know what a Huckster is. Huckster is an old fashioned and typically derogatory term for a salesman. Growing up, salesmen were not a uh, loved uh, individual in my household and I resisted getting into sales um, so when I did finally yeah, jump that uh, last hurdle entered the sales world realized I liked it more importantly realized I was pretty good at it and I realized I wanted to try and change the name up a little bit so I've had an email address of Tr trusty huckster for quite some time so when I wanted to launch my online business trusty huckster mercantile was born all right, let me get into the haul. So not a huge haul this time. There have been some cases, if anyone's following me on uh, Facebook or Instagram, you will see I've had some mother load hauls uh, in the past that has, in some cases, some of those items still have not been processed. They are still sitting in boxes waiting to be listed on Etsy, or in some cases, just I know they won't sell on Etsy, so I'm just waiting for that, uh, always waiting for that spot in one of the three vintage stores. But. Uh, so we start from this. One of the items that I picked up, it's uh, from Clay Arts. Uh, this is called Rack 'em Up. It's a uh, hand painted. Paid a dollar ninety nine for it. See, I've watched people do this hundreds of times, and I always thought I'd be able to do it, and now I lied. I cannot figure out how to do this. Looks like that might be. Uh, looks like that might be focused. I hope so. Anyway, you can see, paid $1.99. A yellow was full price that day. Um, but did a little bit of searching uh, for this, and it's uh, the last sale was actually back in 2017. I have a Worth Point subscription, so that's how I look up uh, some of my uh, some of the comp comparables to see if it's worth actually selling. Um, the last one was 2017, and it actually sold for $23. So $2 investment I thought was pretty good. Um, not sure what I'm going to list it for. I've been taking uh, real nifty vintage uh, Jeffrey's uh, advice and doing everything with free shipping is included. Um, to a certain extent, that's been maybe easier. There's been a couple surprises where shipping cost me way more than I thought it would. Um, but so far, I haven't lost any money. Not good. And uh, so I'm going to continue to do that. Some of the smaller things, I did go into that little deal where uh, Etsy created that situation where if you buy $35 worth, um, you can combine it to get free shipping. I have a handful of things that are in like the $8 range that probably shouldn't even be on there, but 
I listed them because, hey, I was bored. Um, this one's big enough. It's actually really big, so it's going to have to, um, you got to find a box for it. But for 23 bucks as a selling price, I think with uh, shipping uh, included, I can get a pretty decent, um, pretty decent amount for that. Um, one of the uh, smaller items that I had picked up, this was also from Goodwill. It's this little blue and white leaf shaped dish. Uh, admittedly, I was participating in an online sale uh, that was happening in one of the Facebook groups that I'm a part of. Uh, it was uh, Treasures from Yesteryear. If you're not a part of that, uh, Jen runs a great group and their sales and auctions and things all the time. What I've noticed is they tend to like little things. And so this was something that I had picked up from Goodwill. I wanna say this was like 50 cents or a dollar. I couldn't find any comps on it. Uh, it is signed on the back and it does have the year, so 2000, which means I really technically should not be putting it on Etsy, but it's so small, um, and Kazmarin, no, Karmazin, Karmazin uh, is the signature, and then that little oak leaf and acorn uh, symbol, which I thought was kind of cool, but I do not know what this is. Couldn't find it, couldn't find any comparables, the search for Karmazin came up empty. So I have almost nothing listed into it. Uh, this will probably end up either going into another Facebook group sale for like five bucks plus shipping, because uh, it is kind of cute, nice small size, got a little chicken on there, if you can kind of see that. I think it's a chicken, maybe it's a rooster. Um, maybe it's just a bird. Uh, anyway, thought it was kind of pretty, and uh, thought it was just a nice, one of those little add-on items that I thought might be worth um, putting into one of those Facebook groups, or once I get a um, vintage shop, it'd be a great thing for the shop. Uh, similarly, I picked this up, Christmas is coming, so I picked this up as another little item um, that I was going to be offering to that Facebook group. Uh, if you can kind of look at that. It is signed on the top, it's dated 1978, it's kind of a, it's a little acrylic um, Christmas ornament, it's got the hole in the top, a little scratched up where there was a little metal hook that was attached to it, but really nothing significant, and you're probably going to put another hook in it anyway. Uh, another item, five bucks. Um, Kind of, it's etched on the back side. I well, I think that's the back side, and then this flat side would be the front, or maybe it's supposed to be that way. I don't know if it matters. Um, again, 1978, so you know, reliving my childhood. Thought it was cute with the cat and the dog, and see if I can get my face out from behind it so you can actually see the cat and the dog. Um, that was cute. So I'll be adding that, and oh look, it's signed. I didn't notice that. Um, oh yeah, need my cheaters. I have no idea what that says. There's a signature. J corner. I don't think it's important. Um, this the signature on the top was GMA Incorporated, and I couldn't find anything on that. So I don't. It's I don't think it's Hallmark. Um, so I'm not sure in 1978 what kind of greeting company would have been doing ornaments. But anyway, that's, I'll be listing that probably again. Looking on one of those Facebook groups, probably for five bucks uh, plus shipping. You know, a nice little add-on item that uh, people could add to their collection. Okay. Uh, also at the Goodwill, uh, this was an item I had picked up. Blue was half price. So for a regular price of $1, I got this for 50 cents. Uh, kind of, it's got made in Japan is um, marked on the back. And is it going to, you're probably looking at all this stuff backwards. I can't tell. Um, made in Japan, based on the design, I'm going to say kind of a, maybe 30s, maybe early 40s kind of design, which I love, you know, the fact that there's some items like that that, you know, can still have some life. A little bit of crazing going throughout it. Um, no maker's mark, you know, no serious stamps. So it's not gonna go for big box. It's really hard to find serious comps. But this is something that, again, either I can sell in my shop or through a Facebook group. If I were to put it online, I'd probably do it like somewhere in the $15 range, which would include the free shipping. At this point, I'm only shipping to the United States. Um, I'm a wimp. Uh, it's a little ironic considering my bulk of my sales background was international sales, and now I'm just basically turning my back on them. But it's because I don't know how to deal with doing individual shippings. If we're gonna do a, a a container load, I'm your man, but something like this, uh, I'm not ready for that yet. So this is gonna stay in the US, made in Japan, but it's gonna stay in the US and um, you know, not a lot of money, but again, I wanted to give it a good home because it was, uh, I liked the looks of it and I wanted to see, I uh, wanted to bring it into my collection. Um, as I mentioned, I am based in Illinois and I kind of have a soft spot because I do love to travel. Uh, even though I don't do international travel anymore, 
I do still love to travel. Uh, actually really excited to plan a trip to Connecticut next week. Um, it's just one of those things. And now when I do these trips, hey, if I can turn it into a buying um, I, opportunity, so much the better. But uh, this is an Illinois souvenir plate. What I found interesting about this one is it has some odd choices on it from Illinois. So it's really more of a central Illinois. So there is, uh, the top is Grant's home in Galena, which that's actually near the Iowa border. So strike that about being central Illinois. Um, Marina City in Chicago, which although it's referred to as the corn cob building, I love it. Very mid-century modern building right on the river. It's very easy to identify, kind of a twin tower type of thing. Um, um, there's two of them right along the river. Very cool, but not something that typically gets into a plate that only represents, or a tourist item that only represents four places. So Marina City. On the other side is the Illinois State Capitol of Springfield. That is central Illinois. That's what I was thinking of. And then underneath it is Lincoln's birthplace, which is also Springfield. So I think it kind of generated from um, central Illinois, maybe the Springfield area, kind of has the presidential thing going with Galena and the Grant's house there. But I don't know any president that ever lived in Marina Towers. So... I don't know, but I like the I just like the design of it. Like the fact that it's black and white, I think it could be uh, very cool in just any sort of modern or contemporary um, uh, decor. Again, half price blue label, so it's only a buck, and it's actually fine china from Seiyi. Okay, see, I'm going to embarrass myself. S e y e i. Uh, and then in the little banner at the bottom, it says Japan. So based on what I've been trying to pick up, I'm sticking with things that are made in Japan, so they're a little bit older. Uh, again, for a buck, not gonna be a big money maker, but it's kind of cool, from Illinois. Uh, I think it's gonna photograph really nice once I do go to list it, or it'll sit in um, one of these shops once I get a place. And um, you know, it's one of those things that if I can get six to 10 bucks from it, and then if I list it online plus shipping, hey, fantastic. Um, it's just, it's a very cool looking plate. Okay. Every, almost every video I watch and I watch a lot. I have a lot. I love a lot of the people that are out there doing these types of videos. Not a fan of all of them, but I won't talk about those. Um, but almost unilaterally, what I hear a lot is that clear glass, there's really no place for it, that it's not particularly worthwhile. Uh, nobody's collecting it. There's no big money in it. Well, I'm not trying to make big money. I'm trying to give things a good home. So this was an oddball little thing that I think it's kind of ironic that I, I salvaged it because it's a sorority. Now I did a little bit of digging on this and from what I could find, Beta Sigma Phi, okay, I wasn't ever Greek, but I know my Greek letters. Uh, Beta Sigma Phi was actually not an academic uh, fraternity or a sorority. It is a sorority, but it's not an academic sorority. So it uh, more of a social, um, goodwill sorority type thing. Um, I don't know the age of this. From what I can tell, it is not marked. It is relatively heavy, so I do think it's crystal, but would not swear to that, but it's obviously clear glass. Uh, clear glass. Um, there is a lot of stuff online for Beta Sigma Phi. So it must be a pretty decent sized organization. Couldn't really find anything like this. The closest I found on Worth Point was several years ago. They had a glass bowl that had far more of the uh, the volutes or the, the little decorative scrolls and scallops. They were far narrower, so there were a lot more of them, and they went a little bit farther in, and they called it a punch bowl plate. Honestly, didn't know that was a thing. Um, I don't think that's what this is. This would be a pretty big based punch bowl. And I don't know what you would put in it because there is, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little bit of a curve to it. So it's not like it's flat where you would put glasses or anything on it, like the little punch glasses. So it's one of those cases that I think it literally, it's just a centerpiece bowl, um, shallow bowl, dish, whatever. Uh, I got a buck into it. I hope I can find it a good home. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain to ship because it's a little bit big and kind of heavy, um, but if this is an active uh, so social sorority, then maybe this would be something that, I don't know, maybe there are people of a certain age, something like that, um, that this would be something that would look good, that it's less of an issue that it's clear glass, but more something, it's a vintage piece, 
promoting that sorority. So hopefully we can give that a good home. Uh, right alongside of that, uh, virtually the same size, was a Mikasa eyeball. Okay, that's not what they called it, but it's a Mikasa eyeball. Uh, they call it, it is marked Mikasa on the back, Epicure One, and they got creative, and Epicure, it's E-P-I-Q-U-R-E, and dash, then it's spelled out O-N-E. It's Collage D4321, oven to table to dishwasher, Japan. So again, uh, you know, stick with Japan, although I think most of Mikasa stuff was made in Japan. Um, this is something that did not have a lot of comps on it. Um, I found one listing that sold uh, in 2018, last year, that was for four dinner plates. Uh, so not quite this large. Uh, those were, um, I wanna say they were 10 or 11 inches across. Uh, this is 13 and a quarter inch across. So it's more like a charger, chop plate. So I've heard it called different things, but it's a big boy. Um, there was a chop plate listed back in 2016 and that sold for $34. So again, this one was not half price, but it was the list price of 99 cents. So it came home with me. I just thought it looked really cool. Super, you know, it, this, this to me could be a mid-century modern. It could go into a completely contemporary. It could just be somebody who has black china and they just need to pop a color for something that they're serving. You know, the, uh, the holidays are coming up. So it's something that uh, I think could also find a pretty good home. I uh, was really excited that there were some nice comps on it. Um, I love my WorthPoint subscription, but if anyone from WorthPoint is watching this, um, your app isn't particularly good. Uh, luckily, I'm in an area that does get good coverage, so I don't have an issue of trying to um, get internet access. It's really just, it's, it's not as user-friendly and it doesn't tend to find as much as when I come home and do it on my laptop. I can find all kinds of references. So sometimes it's a little bit of a risk, um, but that one for 99 cents, it was gonna be fine. Uh, okay, I, I don't know why I bought this. It's an escargot set. To my knowledge, in my adult life, I do not believe I've ever had snails. And based on where I grew up, I doubt I ever had snails as a kid either. But I thought this was kind of cool. So it is a yaks. Okay, rename your company, people. Yaks Escargo set of three, stainless steel. There's no UPC uh, label on the box itself, so it's, you know, I could tell it was relatively old. It has a World Bazaar tag on it, and I vaguely remember that from my childhood, of 269 is what it sold for back in the day. Underneath it, that you can see there's, uh, I believe it's saying Japan, it might say Taiwan, now that I said that out loud, but they both end in A-N, that's all I can see. But it includes, let me open this little puppy up, all still nicely wrapped in its original wrappings. It includes a little stainless steel, the snail plate itself. Oh, and I was right the first time. There is a sticker on it that says made in Japan. So that is, uh, you know, again, with no UPC on the box. Again, I think it's pretty old. People of a certain age will recognize this little device from Pretty Woman. I will admit that kind of went into my decision-making process to buy this. Um, you squeeze it and that's what grabs those little snails. Slippery little buggers, I believe is what she says. Maybe suckers, I can't remember. And then also what Julia Roberts needed, uh, the little fork uh, that kind of matches the whole thing. So they're all still in the plastic. And I'm going to say, even though the plastic is removable, it's not like it's sealed or anything, I don't believe this was ever, ever used. I think this is a new old stock. It's very nice. The, the packaging is in very nice condition. They do not sell for much. This was one of the items I could not find while I was on the WorthPoint uh, subscription or when I was, and then I jumped over to Etsy just to see what they were having. Didn't find um, anything on this. And when I came home and did a little bit of looking, there was a sale earlier this year for two of them that sold for $16. And what frustrates me is there actually was a second one of these. I should have just grabbed it, but it's so weird that I just grabbed the one because I actually paid full price at $3. So I, I think it's like the most expensive thing I've shown you so far. And it's the oddest. So I'm not gonna make a lot of money on this, but again, this was just, the box is in too good of a condition. 
it was being, you know, it was going to be crushed in this Goodwill store. Um, I'm trying to get it to a good home. So, got that. Um, before I jump to the things that I bought for myself, let me finish the stuff that I bought in the haul. Uh, similarly, full price, the whopping $1.99. This is the Franciscan Autumn pattern. Uh, Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage loves his Franciscan. This is not the pattern he collects. Sorry. Um, I think the pattern is very pretty. Uh, it's also very nice with Thanksgiving coming up. I don't know if this will be as popular around Easter, but it's got the little autumnal leaves there and you got the sticker there, but you can see kind of the leaves under this. This was the whopping full price of $1.99. Uh, in excellent condition. And as a rule, I will tr I'll sometimes try to remember to say that, but as a rule, I don't buy things unless they're in excellent condition. Um, it's gotta be pretty special or I need to, I've missed it uh, if there's something with a nick. Or as what happened today, I was actually packing, I was trying to pack something back up and I actually shattered something. So, you know, I do it sometimes myself. But this was $1.99, um, not a huge seller, uh, but a very consistent seller. Uh, this is something that has sold multiple times uh, on eBay, uh, which is really all that Worth Point tracks. Uh, several sales on eBay that were really ranging from $10 to $20 uh, plus shipping. So I tend to price things on the lower end just because I want to be able to turn it. I live in a townhouse with no basement and a packed garage. I don't have a place for stuff to sit for a, for a year. So. Um, I'll probably list this on the low side just to try and motivate people to take it out. I also have a serving platter that I had picked up earlier. I don't think it's been listed yet, but in the same pattern because I recognize the Franciscan name from uh, Jeffrey talking about it all the time. Uh, even though he collects the Ivy pattern, um, I recognize the Franciscan, liked it as a quality name, and uh, the fact that I had the, pad, the uh, platter figured I'd get this to kind of go along with it. So I'll get those listed. This would definitely be an Etsy sale. I think this will sell better online than it will sell um, in, a, in a vintage store. Uh, next item, also at Goodwill, also paying full price, the whopping 99 cents each. As you can tell, a couple of these are from different Goodwills. Um, I don't remember which is which, so this is a slightly different sticker. Uh, but $2 total. This is something that I've actually done some pretty heavy duty research now that I'm back, uh, doing it at, at home, not on the, um, on the phone. And I'm not having much luck finding it. It is, um, it's called Nico, and then it's called Nico Venture. Um, and it says made in Japan, and it's designed by Aida Associates. Sorry, A-I-D-A, -A. let's get some opera in here. Um, I found one listing for this pattern that was in like more of a creamy color. Uh, you can see this is a very dark brown. I'm not 100% sure of the era. Uh, it, I was concerned it might be like 90s or contemporary. I think the listing for the cream put it in the 80s and 80s, 90s. Uh, or no, I think it's the 70s, 80s. Now I can't remember. Um, I don't know. Maybe. It could go back into the 60s, 70s. The dark brown, I would say, leans it toward the 70s, but I'm sorry, I'm a child of the 70s. I didn't have stuff this cool in my house. So these shapes are just kind of nifty. From what I can tell, this is not designed to have a cover. I could be wrong, um, but the fact that they've got the same slope uh, for both, I, I replacements failed me, cannot find this two bucks in it. It's not creamers and sugars. I think they're very cool. I actually have a lot of them to sell, which is probably a mistake, but I'm big into matching things. Um, I just think it's kind of cool. And I just think these either look nice decorative. You, know, you put your sugar packets in there and put, I don't know, put your straws in here. Who, or who knows? Who cares? Uh, it, most people probably won't use it for cream or the way it's intended, but it still will look good if this is part of your decor. So I picked these up, excited to be able to list these, and I probably end up selling them for like 10 to 15 bucks plus shipping, um, just because I think that's what they're worth. I think you know people would, would pay around that amount. Uh, the last item that I purchased that, or no, I take that back. Um, I, didn't, I didn't stack my uh, inventory very well, so I'm gonna have to do something out of order. But 
This may stay with me. If it weren't so ridiculously small, it's not even a demi toss. It's just small. I mean, I'm I'm doing the 12, 14 inch mugs, so I'm getting a little spoiled. This, uh, from doing a little bit of research from the 80s, it is General Foods uh, Caf uh, Cafe Vienna International Coffee. Uh, a couple listings showed that these were like promotional sets. They had a couple different designs. I will be going to Vienna to visit my daughter who's studying in Germany this year. Uh, I'm going to be meeting her in Vienna for the holidays. So I saw this, thought I had to have it. But I'm not really sure what I can do with it. Cup and saucer, not really my thing. Um, the saucer itself is unmarked, which I know is not particularly uncommon, but that's unmarked. And the only marking is on the um, mug. Doesn't say where it's made, no indication of age. So, you know, if it's on the internet, it must be true. So if the other people that had listed it, it does make sense they had other uh, sets that had two or three different types of designs that were all from different types of international coffee centers. Um, but this is definitely a very Viennese uh, design, secessionist, uh, you know, nouveau design from Vienna. So it might stay in my collection just because it's cool. Uh, it's just really small, and if I'm not going to use it, I don't know if there's a point for me to keep it. So we shall see, uh, but that uh, was one. Okay, now with one exception, what I'm going to sell you, tell, show you now is stuff that I have uh, purchased that is for my personal collection, and in almost, nope, in every case, these are collections that I started building since I started doing thrifting, reselling, vintage stuff. One of them is the Bob White pattern from Red Wing. Picked up this at a Goodwill. Um, seven bucks, which for a Goodwill, kind of pricey, particularly since there was no lid. I scoured that place because the lid is very weirdly shaped. It's uh, kind of domed and then has the kind of a big knob on top. Uh, this is the smaller of the two double-handed casseroles. Um, it has, it's the Bob White pattern. Bob Whites are quails. And so these are quails. I love when I find these online, what people call these. They've been called chickens. They've been called birds. They, whatever. Um, this one is just marked Red Wing. I believe the dinner plates that I started the collection with, I think those are the ones that actually say it's called Bob White. Um, and I could never get a 100% decision whether Bob White is one word or two, so I usually search for both. Um, anyway, so I'm now on the hunt for the cover, uh, but this will be a nice addition to the pieces I'm collecting to have a uh, Christmas party um, in my little townhouse um, using vintage serving and uh, dining pieces. Okay, I didn't know this was a thing. I'm new to vintage, or not, well, not new to vintage, that's stupid, I am vintage. Um, I'm new to reselling, so I'm new to like digging through things that I don't know. I need more of these in my life. So what this is, is a flower frog. You can see it's just like a traditional glass flower frog. You've got all the little holes. But what these are designed to do is sit in a console bowl. So typically it's part of a set. So you'd have the, the, the depression glass console bowl, and then you'd have the, the candlesticks on both sides. This would be sitting in the middle of the bowl. And then the concept would be you would actually put very low flowers, you know, like sprigs of flower, something very small, like more of a spill vase type floral as opposed to, you know, roses uh you'd have something down here so she looks like she is standing in a garden of either greenery or flowers okay i think that is very cool she is the second one that i purchased first one was also clear i'm trying to find non-clear ones um but i'm also trying to find non-clear ones that are within my budget i did just find a she is called Charlotte. I believe she's called Charlotte. I was thinking of the Antiques Freaks podcast that was talking about frozen Charlotte. She looks like she's made of ice, but this is not a frozen Charlotte. She's just a Charlotte. Um, she is technically a nude. She's got a cloth draped in front of her. This is the smaller version. There's also a significantly larger version. And I found the larger version in an amber glass. And she was marked for 95 bucks. We weren't at a Goodwill. It probably is worth 95 bucks, but that's not coming out of my pockets. 
Um, if she had been a different color, I might have actually paid 95 bucks, but I have a feeling the amber is gonna be fairly common. I'm just, I just have, I'm just now starting to look for them. So the first one I bought was the Seagull, um, a little bit taller than her. Uh, and I have a place, there's a window in my house that is a, long, a wide, short window. So every one I buy is going to need to be under 14 inches tall because that's how big tall the window is. Uh, she will do nicely. Um, I'm hoping to add some more collection, more glass, uh, more flower frogs, fl flower frogs. And they have animals, they've got all kinds of different things. So I'm hoping to build into the collection. And so this is, this is gonna be one of those, I have a feeling of my hunt. Like I really doubt I'm ever gonna find one of these at a Goodwill, but maybe I will, who knows. So that is for my personal collection, not for sale. Uh, and she was 20 bucks. $20. Uh, this was at, from an antique store uh, in Minneapolis. Uh, she was listed 25. The woman happened to be there the day um, I was there. I was literally, I had no time. I, I shouldn't have been there. I was in between appointments, but I wanted to go there because I'd been there before. She happened to be working that day. She knew she had one. She listed for 25. I asked her if she'd take 20. She said yes. I felt kind of like a jerk afterwards, but I wanted to pay 20. I didn't want to pay 25. But I know it costs money to be in a store and I know I'm not looking for goodwill prices. So I, re I respect that. I respect that for resellers. If there's something that's too expensive at a goodwill store, it's not too expensive. It's just too expensive for me to make any money on resale. So I hope it goes someplace else or it'll still be there when they have, in my area, they do a lot of 50% off and 75% off options. So always get them there. All right, now next items came from, it's another collection that I'm building. This is going into a different window, uh, happens to be the one in the front of my house, that has a large, um, what do you call it? I'm looking at it, large, large fan window at the top. So it's significantly taller. I'm not limited by the 14 inch. So what I have started, because following people on Instagram is a very dangerous game, um, I found several examples of people who are showing their swung glass collections lined up in color order, etc. And I decided I, I needed to start a swung glass collection. So this one, I'm 100% sure I overpaid for. This was another um, antique store. Uh, the trip to the last trip to Minnesota was, I decided I have too much stuff I need to list. So, although I did buy things. Um, I had too much stuff to list, so a lot of it was really searching for my own stuff. So I did some antique stores, you know, so really assuming these are just gonna be for me. I wanted something of size because I have a bittersweet um, floor vase that's up there right now and it's kind of off at the corner, so I wanted something that's gonna kind of counterbalance on the other side. Um, I, it's worth every penny that I paid for it, but I did pay 50 bucks. So to me, this was worth the 50 bucks. I'm sure I probably could have found it cheaper someplace else. Um, but I got to, okay, this sounds creepy, but I got to feel it, I got to stroke it, I got to check to make sure there's no cracks or chips or see exactly what it looked like. So for that, I was willing to pay the 50 bucks. She had a friend um, that was bigger and that was $80. Wasn't willing to pay that. So this came home with me, $50. It is marked Fenton Amberina. I'm still learning a lot about glass. I love glass. I've had an art glass collection for 25, 30 years that is not for sale. Um, but that is more art glass and more contemporary. So vintage, I'm still learning. I don't see any marks on this. So it's one of those cases that I know from watching old Curiosity Shop with Scott. Um, he always talks about what older pieces aren't marked, that the newer Fenton ones that are the ones that are marked. So the tags are fairly detailed. This entire shop, uh, the, the stall at the antique mall was very heavily laden in glass. So I'm going to may give the benefit of the doubt that this person knew what they were doing. So this is Fenton. I'm not gonna lose the tag because I'm gonna make sure that I like learn from this lesson. So I've got that as a big piece, but just to make things interesting, I also found a littler piece. I'm not sure I'm gonna continue collecting these. This will be the third one of these. I don't think this any I don't think this long any longer falls into the swung glass category. This is either pulled or it's draped or ruffled. I'm not sure. I thought it was cool. It was uh, nine dollars. It will look good on this on the it's a shallow shelf. 
um, that I have, it might make it look nice to have some variety in heights. So I'd like to display this, but I have three of these and I'm not sure these are long for my shelves. Um, we shall see as the collection grows if this is something I continue doing. But for nine bucks, I did really like the looks of it. Again, I got to feel it. This was actually in a different, um, this was in a different stall that did not specialize in glass. So I don't know, maybe I overpaid for it, but they do, really were just, almost everything they were selling was in the five to $10 range. I think they were just selling decorative accessories and I was perfectly happy to pick this up. All right, the last item, I hope I don't like break everything as I try and bring this puppy over here. Okay, um, this was at one of my favorite vintage stores in Minnesota. I've been there, do a couple trips up there. One of my biggest customers, actually my biggest customer is based in Minnesota. Um, so I have to go up there on, uh, often. And when I do, I visit a place called The Prop Shop. I should have looked it up. I believe it's in Eden Prairie, if I remember right. So it's kind of like Western suburbs. Um, it's set up like a boutique. I mean, it is not a Goodwill uh, and their prices are good prices, but really more for a collector, really more for, you know, if you want something yourself, but they always end up having a sale. This one I bought, it wasn't on sale. Doing a little bit of comps, it appears this is the mother of punch bowls. Uh, if you look behind me, let me duck a little bit, I actually have a salt glazed stoneware collection um, that I've been building for years. Um, it sits on my 1920 um, vertical grand piano and looks great. This is also salt glazed, but this is obviously a much paler hue than what I've got. Uh, far more contemporary. It is actually Louisville stoneware. Louisville. It's supposed to be one syllable. I can't do it. I'm not from there. Um, it's marked Louisville stoneware made in Kentucky. Doing the, doing the searching, this sells fairly well. Not super often, but fairly well. Um, as a, with the punch bowl, the last two listings of the punch bowl with the cups sold for 150 bucks. I do not have the cups, but I only paid $15 for this. And it is the 12 days of Christmas. It starts here somewhere. So you got the title there. And as you spin it along, it's, uh, uh, it starts, the text right above it starts with on the 12th day of Christmas and then works itself backwards and is illustrated with all of the individual references from the song. I thought it was beautiful. I am going to resell it. It is going to be a pain to ship this because it's probably eight to 10 pounds by itself. Um, but I think this is something that will sell. It will make a beautiful centerpiece. And if, that's, if I have any criticism for the prop shop, if you're watching, uh, you have some beautiful displays. But don't forget, people need to try and buy from your displays. I had to pluck out something like four or five different things that were living in this to get to it just to see how much it cost. Um, and now that I think about it, I don't think I put them back nicely. So there was shrubbery all over the place. But anyway, um, I don't tend to do that. I tend to be very respectful. But um, I was this. it's a big boy, and uh, I do think it'll do well. So really excited to have that in added to my collection. I'll definitely be putting that on Etsy because I think I'll have a better luck, even though the, the shipping will be a pain. I think I'll have a better luck um, finding a buyer for it. So that is my first haul video. Oh, wait, no, I missed one. Recently, okay, let's just share my life story in the very first video. I'm recently divorced, amicably, amicably so. I was married for 24 years. Um, just not divorced, not married anymore. So that's why I'm now in a townhouse. When I left the house, um, I had a globe travel collection. Uh, it was kind of, it was basically part of the basement, uh, which was finished. It's just, I don't have that space anymore. So when I was getting out of that place to come to this one, I sold a lot of stuff. Donated a lot to Goodwill. Goodwill had a really good week that week. Um, I am now trying to recreate some of it in a much smaller space. So I'll have a I have a shelf in my uh, master bedroom, and it can only hold some short stuff. Um, but I'm trying to get different variations of globes. And this was something that I also got at the prop shop. So the place that I just got that massive punch bowl, I got this. Um, 
it's not in the best condition, but it's not in bad condition. And this was one of those cases, it was originally $8. It had been there long enough that they were selling it at half price. So it was $4. So for $4, I was more than happy to take it home. It'll look great up on that shelf. Um, the sticker is pretty well picked away. So I don't know what that says. It doesn't matter to me because literally it is just going up on a shelf to be decorative. Uh, I'm not reselling it. Someday my daughter will be stuck with all my crap and she'll have to figure out what it's worth. But for right now, it's going up on a shelf. So that is everything. Uh, so thank you for joining me for Trusty Huckster Mercantile's first haul video. Uh, if you're looking for me, uh, you can find me on Etsy. We are under T h mercantile so you don't have to type in the entire long-winded name uh, so th mercantile stands for trusty huskers mercantile uh, you can also find me on facebook and instagram um, at, also under th mercantile thank you for your time and i hope to do, you enjoy this i would love to hear some comments i may not love them once i see them but uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say, and if there's ideas that I can make these better, uh, I would definitely like to improve and see if I keep going on. Thank you so much for your time.